question um, that occurs to you during this session, um, please use the chat function on um, uh, the GoToWebinar, and we'll be holding a little time at the end for any of those questions. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce you to our firm briefly, as well as our host today. Uh, again, we are Stroudwater Associates. We have offices in Atlanta, Portland, Maine, and Nashville. Um, we're a leading national healthcare consulting firm. We work only with healthcare clients. We work, uh, we focus on strategic, operational, and financial areas where our perspective offers the highest value. We're now in our 34th year, and we're proud of our track record with rural hospitals, community hospitals, healthcare systems, and large physician groups. With that, I will give you a little bit of background on our two hosts. First up is Cynthia Wicks. She's in our Portland, Maine office. Uh, she has more than 30 years of experience in the healthcare industry. She's worked with uh, national managed care organizations, health insurance companies, ACOs, physician IPAs, and hospital system organizations. Our second host today joins us from Atlanta. Uh, she is Louise Bride. She also has more than 30 years of experience in healthcare management and clinical operations, as well as a proven record of accomplishments in developing and executing initiatives to enhance access and improve quality and cost effectiveness in the healthcare delivery system. Um, with that introduction, um, I will turn it over to Cindy Wicks here in Portland. Thank you, Kimberly, and welcome, everyone. Obviously, uh, when we set this webinar up, we knew it was Halloween, but we did not know it was also going to be such a big day in Boston, so congratulations to our favorite Red Sox team. Had to put that little nod in there for those of you that may have uh, been at the parade earlier or going out to uh, the pubs after this. But we'll get started. Uh, Louise and I had the pleasure of meeting some of you when we were in Boston several weeks ago for the meet and greet. So I'm going to recap that a little bit and then take a deeper dive into some of what we have to offer for you folks um, for our services. So as um, Kimberly said, we work exclusively with healthcare clients and are proud um, to be in all 50 states. Our consultants include executives from the health plans, uh, health systems, ACOs, federally qualified health clinics, and physician practices. We have worked with some of the Mass Health organizations already, so we're very familiar with Massachusetts and the Mass Health Initiative. And the consultants at Stroud Water that you meet at the beginning of your projects are the ones you'll be working with. Um, we don't have a lot of layers of, of consultants in our organization, so we have a very deep relationship with our, with our clientele. Um, and we bring direct experience and expertise from both payers and providers. And I joined Stroudwater this past year, and I have to tell you that the, um, the heart and soul of the organization is terrific, and our, our founder kind of has this tagline that we end every meeting with, let's go out and do some good, which is sort of how we feel about uh, going into organizations, and hopefully we leave them better than when we walked in. Uh, the next slide here is just to put some faces and names together. Obviously, please go out on our website. All of uh, our happy faces are out there. If you click on us, you'll find our profiles and further information about each one of us, but these are just a subset of the folks that may be working on some of the mass health initiatives. Our team credentials, a little bit different, I think, one of the differentiators for Stroudwater is, is the depth of um, expertise as uh, both clinically and operationally from, from the healthcare industry. Um, Dr. Heidi Larson is here with us today and she'll be um, available for questions. But she's a, from private practice, um, as well as ACO experience around quality, cost, and utilization. She has a real passion for team-based care, including the behavioral health and uh, physical health care integration. We have former clinicians, such as Louise Bride and, and Carla Wilbur, who have uh, depth of knowledge in care management and quality expertise within these various organizations. Um, huge concentration on care management models, care coordination, quality metric improvement and reporting. We have folks that have been prior uh, state Medicaid program executives, uh, prior payer executives, in particular in uh, uh, the medical management, uh, health plan operations, and myself, I've got a background in provider um, network and contracting and value-based reimbursement models. Um, we have ACO executives uh, that had uh, started up ACOs as well as run them, 
and CEOs and CFOs from a variety of different organizations. So a depth of knowledge, I think, is a, a differentiator for us. Stroudwire, just to give you a little bit of an understanding, when you go on our website, um, we, we have kind of a couple different markets in what we call service lines, and you'll see that we both are in rural markets as well as community and larger marketplaces. And down the left-hand side are, are uh, what we call our, our service lines um, that span from, you'll see performance improvement, physicians, population health, affiliations, that one includes mergers and acquisitions. We do a lot of that kind of work as well as affiliating um, and contractually uh, putting organizations together to either form larger ACOs and that sort of thing. We have an entire group of folks that are uh, focused on revenue cycle improvement. Um, we have an analytics group, and uh, obviously we have a, we also have a group that works on facilities, the facility planning, um, and some of that just redesign work as well, um, given the um, uh, you know the value-based contracting that's going on out there. So this is the sum total of some of the services we offer, and please explore our website. This next slide, just to take all of that body of work in those seven different areas of service lines, this is our transition framework. Transition We're certainly not going to go in this, into this today in de great detail, but this is more of a pictorial to let you know what we have capabilities of doing. We, we work both on payment model, half of uh, this slide, as well as improving the delivery system itself. With that middle column, row in there, row four, being all of the competencies and the infrastructure and everything that you need in order to do population health and uh, managing the populations that we're all talking about here today. <clears throat> With that, we decided to apply for just four domains and we're accepted in the four domains that you see here up on the screen, the actuarial and financial, care coordination, integration, performance improvement, and population health management. I am going to leave this slide up here just as a, as a grounding on this because we did already receive some questions um, and so we will start answering some of those and then open it up further to uh, additional questions. And Kimberly, I'll turn it back to you so you can uh, you know, vet the questions here. Okay, thank you so much, Cindy. Um, and we are gonna keep you to time today. It's 12.39, so we'll get through a few questions that we received in advance and then save time at the end for any from those of you on the webinar. Uh, let's see, the first one in is regarding care coordination and integration, which is domain two. Um, the question is, uh, can Stratowater help clients develop or improve their transitions of care and care coordination processes. Um, that sounds like a good one for our colleague Louise in Atlanta. Louise? Okay, thank you, Kimberly, and good afternoon, everyone. As Cindy has already mentioned, several colleagues and I have extensive experience working with healthcare organizations regarding care management, care coordination, and transitions of care focusing in particular on processes and tools, as well as roles and responsibilities and so forth. Um, we work with clients in a variety of settings, including ACOs, health plans, and hospitals. And I'd like to say just a word about a recent example. We have worked with a new Medicaid ACO to help them develop comprehensive care management workflows to clearly delineate the roles and responsibilities among all the parties involved. So that would be the ACO itself, their partner managed care organizations, <clears throat> their community partners, and the PCPs, uh, making sure that the PCPs stay in the loop as well. <coughs> Excuse me. The workflows address uh, the completion and sharing of key care management steps such as the performing of the comprehensive patient assessments, which Mass Health requires, uh, completion of care plans, and also the workflows addressed ongoing patient communications and handoffs in this in this uh, fairly complicated model with so many parties involved. And the goal is to really ensure coordinated follow up with the shared members and patients. Other examples of our work uh, with hospitals to improve their patient discharge processes in particular, and that has included helping the, uh, the hospital to adopt a standardized discharge planning checklist with the goal to increase consistency in their overall discharge process. And then we've also done quite a lot of work with health plans to identify and address the root causes of potentially avoidable admissions 
readmissions and ED utilization, all which has become increasingly important as organizations are really addressing the total cost of care. And with that, Kimberly, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Uh, our second question um, this afternoon is um, regarding performance improvement, Domain 7. Um, the question is specific to MassHealth one-to-multiple relationship and how its complexity and how administratively burdensome it is. Um, does Stroudwater have experience streamlining workflows and processes, especially between different organizations? Um, that sounds like a question for Cindy Wicks. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, yes, I, I mean, Stroudwater has, as I said before, an entire team of experts, um, some of which are actually lean certified to do process improvement um, of types of work. As you heard uh, Louise just mentioned, she gave a, a good example of, of, of doing that between organizations like MCOs and, um, you know, health, different health plans and ACOs and community partners um, in Massachusetts. Um, other examples of that work um, are, are revenue cycle folks uh, work with clients on um, scheduling call center performance work, scheduled call center performance improvement. Uh, they've engaged these clients, uh, have led to improved staffing matrices. Uh, they've worked on process flows, improved job uh, scripting, um, and proactive uh, dispute resolution for one of the clients. We've also done work, a uh, lean process between payer and uh, one of the largest uh, hospital systems. Uh, there were issues there with how often and the frequency that the provider had to call into the call center with the payer. So we actually did a lean process crossing between those two organizations that actually led to a reduction in calls being made about claims questions by about 30%. So those are just a few of the examples. We've got a lot more, but um, we can save that to, to send out to folks. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Um, looking at the next question queued up, uh, looks to me to be a hybrid of care coordination and population health management, which are domains two and eight. Um, what experience does Stroudwater have at implementing team-based care in the primary care practice setting? Um, I think that's perfect for our colleague and uh, physician PCP, uh, Dr. Heidi Larson, here in our Portland office. Absolutely. Thanks, Kimberly. Stroudwater's worked with small primary care practices in a rural setting and also those within large uh, multi-specialty groups to develop a scalable model for a high-functioning practice whereby providers, staff, patients, and families are working together to promote the health and well-being of a panel or population of patients and help us move away from sick or episodic care. We do this by using standardized protocols and a redistribution of workflow within the constraints of our teams that are already developed, enhancing productivity and creating more efficiency in practice workflow, and helping to restore the joy of practicing medicine through a return to the emphasis on relationships in primary care. Thank you, Dr. Larson. Uh, queuing up our next question, uh, finance and actuarial, domain number one. The question is, does Stroudwater have any experience with risk-based reimbursement models and aligning provider, staff, and organizational incentives? Um, I do believe that Cindy Wicks would be the right person for that. Um, thanks, Kimberly. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, Stroudwater has extensive experience with uh, risk reimbursement models. Uh, we've worked on bundle payment uh, models um, between some orthopedists and uh, hospital system. Um, done a lot of payer provider contracting and negotiations, um, including risk model and capitation models. So that, yes, extensive knowledge of those these types of contracts that we're that we're dealing with with both upside and downside risk. Um, have direct experience, um, yes, also with fund flow models, physician compensation, um, and alignment of all the incentive metrics uh, in, embedded in these contracts. We're actually working with a uh, current client right now, um, setting strategy to address incentivizing the uh, and getting further engagement with the specialist. So, um, you know, maybe potentially even using a bundle payment uh, methodology within that. So, yes, extensive experience with those types of contracts. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. 
Uh, we have another question regarding population health management, um, domain eight, uh, hot topic, substance abuse. Um, the question is, our accountable care organization has a high volume of members with substance abuse disorders. Um, can Stroudwater help our PCPs manage the substance abuse patients in our population? Uh, that sounds like another good one for Dr. Larson. Sure. Thanks, Kimberly. At Stroudwater, we believe that one of the most effective means to address the opioid crisis begins with the development of a comprehensive set of community partnerships that are driven through the primary care delivery system. We can help you develop protocols around responsible prescribing and use of the PDMP, prescription management, treatment for addiction, including medication-assisted treatment services, and overall assessment and strengthening of our consortium with our community partners to address the opioid crisis. Thank you, Dr. Larson. Uh, we're doing well on time, so we can fit in a few more questions. Um, let's see, we've got uh, performance improvement and staffing optimization, which is domain seven. Uh, the question is, has Stroudwater done work assessing staffing models and productivity? That I know we have, and I think that Louise in Atlanta would be best to answer that. Okay, thanks, Kimberly. And, and yes, Stroudwater has done work with a, a variety of clients to assess and, and in many instances assist them then to restructure their current um, organizational structure. Uh, we typically begin with a review of the current state and then we will share and discuss our findings and then make recommendations. Uh, as I mentioned, it may be around uh, some organizational restructuring I've uh, had some opportunity to be directly involved with that type of work. Uh, we may modify changes in staffing ratios and also um, have been involved in helping with uh, re-examining re or examining and making changes to uh, existing staffing roles and responsibilities. And then another area of focus can involve helping the organization to align staffing with demand that's particularly pertinent in a hospital setting, but that can also be true in an ambulatory care setting uh, where you're then modifying staffing re uh, ratios to try and better correlate with actual patient volume and with demand at any point in time. Um, and I think I'll leave it at that and uh, in the interest of time and Kimberly, turn it back to you. Thanks. Thank you, Louise. Um, let's see, we are doing pretty well on time, and I'm just trying to tee up the next question. It looks like we're going to speak about care coordination um, and integration, which is domain two. Um, how does Stroudwater help clients develop an effective care management program? And um, second part of that is what are the most important factors to consider? I think that would also be Louise in Atlanta. Okay, thanks again, Kimberly. Uh, yes, this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is an area where we have done quite a bit of work. Uh, we have uh, assisted organizations to, uh, in some instances, develop a care management program from scratch. And in other instances, we uh, may be providing advice and guidance around uh, evaluating the current care management model, uh, looking at current uh, care management staffing, roles and responsibilities, and then making recommendations for changes. Uh, one of the ways that we have been involved is working with an organization, and a great example would be um, in the situation in Massachusetts where there may already be uh, an organization with a commercial or a Medicare ACO, and now they are moving into um, the Medicaid arena and participating in the Mass Health ACO. And so in that situation, one of the ways that we could provide assistance would be to help the, um, the ACO to, to really identify and understand the profile of that, managed, of that Medicaid population. Again, they may be new in working with that really vulnerable and in often, uh, in many cases, complicated patient population. So helping the ACO to 
utilize their clinical data, their claims data, their dem demographic data and cost data to really develop a profile to understand then and, and out of that identify and develop targeted programs and interventions that are really um, specifically focusing on the needs of that Medicaid population. Thank you, Louise. Um, I want to back up just a little bit because we were fortunate to be joined by our colleague, uh, John Bain. And John Bain is the head of uh, Stroudwater Revenue Cycle Solutions, and he's an expert um, in the space, um, which I, looks like in the mass health world would go under performance improvement. Um, John, um, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, would you like to say a few words about the importance of RevCycle in um, consideration for the ACOs and the community partners? Uh, sure. Um, I, I think for the most part, when we look at uh, RevCycle in you know, the world of ACOs, uh, it really gets to uh, fundamentals and blocking and tackling. So if we're looking to make uh, significant decisions on um, how we're going to perform or putting metrics in place, uh, it's really critical to make sure that all of the functionality that is feeding uh, that decision making is really sound and is working as desired and is uh, performing as desired. So um, what we've tried to do over you know, the last decade or so is really focus in and function uh, those, those ideals together so that um, regardless of where you are in your journey or what metrics you're trying to put in place, uh, that the systems are set up to feed that information correctly. So uh, we've seen an awful lot of folks that have uh, tried to put these things together and as the metrics come through, they get some faulty information one way or another just because the system isn't functioning as designed or desired. So uh, we really try to work with our multidisciplinary team to just try to make sure that, that those, um, those fundamentals are in place and are providing and acting as they should. Back to you, Kim. Thank, thank you, John. Appreciate that, especially since you had no advance warning. So <laughs> thank you for doing that on the fly. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Cindy for a few closing remarks so that we can get you on to your uh, pub calls and parades today down in Boston. Thank you, Kimberly. And I just want to thank everybody for joining today. Uh, we had quite a few of you that had signed up for, um, for this little session, an introduction to Stroud Water. Um, there certainly wasn't enough time today, Louise and I were in Boston, to meet and greet everybody personally and uh, wanted to just give you a little bit more depth of understanding of who we are and introduce ourselves a little better. Um, obviously, I'm putting up the uh, contact information here. I am the uh, liaison with Apt Associates for the Mass Health, um, you know, Mass Health um, Initiative. Um, you can contact either myself or Luis. That information is up there. In addition to that, obviously, we are in Boston frequently and Massachusetts and in, in different parts of Massachusetts. So please, if you'd like a face-to-face um, -face meeting, we'll be glad to do so. Um, as a matter of fact, Dr. Larson has done some work out in the western part of the state. So all of us are down there um, quite frequently and be glad to get together with you. If any of you are thinking about, also I should add this, um, if there are services that Stroudwater you don't feel provides that you need, but, but we have some of what you need and you would like us to try to collaborate with another one of the TA organizations, you know, maybe one that's more IT oriented, for example, because of your needs, we'll be glad to have that, you know, uh, conversation if that is appropriate. And conversely, if there's those of you that are thinking about combining your resources um, in terms of the disrupt dollars and um, doing a joint project, um, certainly, we're amenable to that as well, having done a lot of work with uh, cross-organizations and uh, affiliation types of works. We're working with large-scope projects and, and multiple stakeholders all at the same time and feel very comfortable doing so. So I wanted to offer those also as, as opportunities if, if you'd like to talk to us further about those. Um, and I think that is all for this afternoon. Um, and I really want to thank my colleagues for being available to answer, answer the questions. And thank you again for joining us on this Halloween day. And uh, please go have some fun for us uh, at the Red Sox celebration since we're, we're up here in Mar Portland, Maine, and, and Atlanta today. So, so uh, have some fun this afternoon and enjoy yourself. Take care. Thank you all.